Hey everybody, Tom here with Hidden Beats again, and today we have Tyler Joe Miller. How are you doing? Doing well, man. It's uh, it's been super hot here, but it's a little cooler today, so I'm uh, I won't be sweating on camera. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a little bit like I'm based in Ottawa, so it's been a little bit hot here, except for we had some rain last night finally. So yeah, us too here actually too. I mean, yeah, it's, it seems it's all over the place right now. So yeah. Um, so we're here to talk about you, your music, and all the fun things in between. So for those who are new to you as an artist, you want to give maybe a little kind of intro to who you are and your music? Yeah, sure. I'm uh, I'm kind of new at it. So I'm, I'm only, uh, you know, been doing this for a few years now and uh, only released music starting, oh man, I think I put the first song out like, it must be just over two years ago now or two and a half or something like that. And so it's, uh, it's still pretty fresh for me. Uh, you know, I'm, I was a contractor before this and I was a contractor for most of my career still, uh, you know, was doing the nine to five, but having, uh, you know, radio interviews while I'm up on a ladder on the construction site or whatever. And so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I'm a carpenter by trade, but, uh, yeah, started doing the country thing and, and things kind of took off and, and, uh, yeah, it's it's been a bit of a, a whirlwind and it kind of feels like I'm just trying to catch up because <laughs> I think the music caught on a little faster than we were thinking it ever would. And so, uh, yeah. And then I was lucky enough to have uh, my first two songs go number one on billboards, which uh, was pretty nuts. And uh, that kind of launched everything for me and uh, and, you know, kind of set this whole career for me. And so this is I'm just trying to play catch up. That's <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's Basically a pretty big story yeah it's a pretty big accomplishment having like you're the first independent artist to to do that on the canadian billboards apparently so yeah apparently <laughs> <laughs> i mean from what i can read anyways it's uh i do some research but i'm never the best at it but i saw that yeah. i was like okay well that's that's pretty awesome yeah it's kind of one of those things where like uh you know the, the story of my my first number one actually we thought we had a number two and we missed uh, the number one by one spin. Okay. So like literally, literally one radio station had to play my song one more time. That was it. But like nobody would have known that we were missing it by one. And so <laughs> yeah. uh, Luke Combs would beat us out and we're like, oh, crap. Like we're so close to the number one. Like that would have been nuts. Like number two was still unbelievable. And then uh, I think it was like a couple days went by or something like that. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, there's a station in... Uh, Regina that actually caught on to uh th they had done this like cookout show thing and I'd actually played on it and they played it live on air and I sang pillow talking which was the song fully on air and okay. so they reached out to billboards and went hey did you guys count this spin because this should count <laughs> and they're like no we didn't and so what happens then when you tie for spins it's whoever had the most increased spins that week that will get the number one. So we okay. ended up landing the number one spot, but, uh, they, they end up calling me on like a zoom call. Uh, I was busy. I was spraying the ceiling. Uh, <laughs> and all of a sudden I get a call from, uh, my label and they're like, Hey man, like this happened. And so they explain the whole story and they're like, you got the number one in Canada. And my reaction was like, are you sure? <laughs> and also <laughs> yeah. like, I can't let this dry. I got to get back to spraying the ceiling. <laughs> but like in my mind, like I didn't fully understand the the weight of all this. Like, you know, people, you know, go the whole careers without hitting the top 50. And we were just lucky enough. And uh, I think I got a horseshoe up my butt that we, uh, <laughs> you know, we're lucky enough for it to end up going number one. But it's one of those things like I, I, I wasn't in the industry really. Like I didn't really understand these numbers and spins and all that, like, I just didn't fully get it. And I, mm. I don't know if it's actually fully sunk in, which I think is good. <laughs> yeah. Kind of keep, keeps you grounded and in, in your successes and stuff that way. And so, uh, yeah, we're just putting out music that we like and, and hoping that people like it too. I mean, that's the way to do it. Just have fun with it. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I was just, uh, my manager just sent me over a, a clip of Luke Combs, uh, talking on some Apple Music podcast, and he basically says he's like, "I'm blown away by 
but how often things aren't for the fans when the fans are literally our number one priority or they should be. Mm -hmm. And so his whole thing is like, I just want to put up music that my fans are going to like, and like, it should be more based around that stuff. And, and I, I loved hearing that. Cause I was like, okay, sweet. Like, I, I think that we are on the right path, uh, put up music and just, you know, not, not really worry if it's going to, you know, you obviously want it to be on radio and radio to like it and stuff like that. And, yeah. and, you know, hit the editorial playlist on, you know, the streaming services, but it's like, man, I just, I just want people to like it. I just want people to enjoy it. Uh, Cause it, it's one thing to, to hear your song on the radio. It's like friggin' awesome. Uh, weird too. But then when you get in, when you get in front of a crowd and they're singing your song back to you, there's no other feeling like, and it's like, okay, that's what this is about. Yeah. Yeah. I can only imagine that. I, so I actually, I, I'm a photographer first before I do, I'd start at these mm. interviews. So I'm in front taking pictures and I get to see kind of the experience everyone's having. So like, I would get to see you right. on stage enjoying yourself. And then you can, I've caught a few of those moments where you can just see like that. Wow. Moment kind of thing. Yeah. It's uh, it's nuts. Like I remember the first time I'd heard that and I was just like, I stopped singing at one point to let the crowd like, I just wanted to see if they were going to do it. And it was mm -hmm. like, oh, my God. Like, I had my in-ears in, and I can still hear, <laughs> you know, the crowd yeah. singing in the back. So, uh, yeah, like, that's one of the best moments that there is, I think, as an artist. Um, it, it, it's hard to beat. No, that's awesome. Did you grow up in, like, a musical family at all? Like, how did you get into wanting to do music? Yeah. Uh, you know, my, my family is musical. Uh but like, there's nobody that taught me like how to play guitar or anything. Like everything was kind of like self-taught. Um, but yeah, like my, like my mom and her sisters, they're, they're phenomenal singers. They're like my, my mom's side is kind of the one that like brought me up on a lot of my country music. My dad's side is a bit more like rock and roll sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like my grandpa played guitar, my uncle played banjo, uh, and then my dad's side, like my, my uncle's a great singer. And yeah, it's just people are like musical in my family. Um, but uh, it's like my brother and sister, like they are, they can also sing. It's just they never took a crack at it in this way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I kind of got into it actually because I, it's kind of random, but I started going to uh, a, a church when I was in like high school. And some guy was like kind of running the music part of things there. And, and there was girls and music. So I was like, this place is great. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the hell they're talking about from that pulpit, but I, <laughs> this, this is great otherwise. And uh, yeah. And so the guy goes, Hey, do you know how to play guitar? And I was like, I know Zeppelin and Metallica. He goes, okay, perfect. Uh, do you know how to uh, sing? I was like, I'm not sure. Never tried okay, well, you're going to start the band, hear some CDs, learn these songs sort of thing. And that's how I got into music. It was basically trying to impress girls, but, uh, and then it just kind of stuck. And I, I mean, growing up, I thought I, I thought I wanted to be an actor. That was like the dream. Okay. Um, and I think that'd still be fun at some point. I don't really know what I would, how I would fit in, in that industry, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. And, uh, but I just stuck with music and and then for a while I stopped chasing it like I was in an alternative rock band before uh, in my okay. early 20s with some buddies and actually three of us are now in you know my keyboardist is my roommate that I, or was my roommate that I lived with for like 10 years he plays keys still and then the guy that played drums in that old band is now our front of house okay and uh and tour manager and so it's just like we all kind of like knew that we wanted to end up going to country music Cause that's kind of what I grew up on, but we, uh, we stopped doing music for a while and I stopped chasing it. And then it kind of felt like music started chasing me after a while. And, uh, I knew I was always going to go back to it, but I, I started a contract in business. I was really bus busy with that stuff. Uh, I have a nonprofit and stuff as well that I do building projects down in Guatemala. And so that's actually where a guy heard me play my guitar and was like, Hey, you should be playing country music. Cause I was just playing some of my songs and they just so happy to be country. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, he, he kind of asked why I wasn't doing country music. And I was like, well, I've tried the band thing. It's so difficult. Like, you, you know, you need a, 
you know, a break to really make it sort of thing. And I was like, honestly, I'm just happy with helping people right now. Like I was happy running my business contract. And then also I'm like, I'm enjoying this nonprofit thing. Like I just enjoy helping people. People are my passion. Mm -hmm. And uh, he goes, well, think about how many people you could help. You know, if you build a platform for yourself to where people want to hear not just what you have to sing, but you have to say, and you can use that platform to influence more to help. And I was like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that sounds like a cool idea. And so uh, you never think those things are going to actually happen or stick, but then I put my name up there to just play for other artists. And so I was a backup guitarist and singer for uh, a couple of years, I think, or maybe a year. And uh, yeah. And then there's people in the industry that were just always lifting me up and going like, dude, you can sing, you can write, like you should be doing your own thing. And I knew I wanted to eventually. And then um, uh, I had a record label reach out to me and ask if I wanted to do it. <laughs> I mean, Hey, that's and not so, bad. Yeah, it was from a Facebook video, actually. A friend of mine, she was a country artist, and um, we did a, this duet on Facebook of like an Ed Sheeran and Beyonce cover, and, uh, and they had their song Perfect that they did, and so we mm -hmm. did this duet, put it out on Facebook, and it got around to a couple people on the label, and so they reached out to the, the owner of the label, Mike Denny, and they're like, you got to check this guy out. And so I ended up getting an email and, you know, go out and have a coffee because one of our reps now, one of my managers, Mitch, lives in Langley here where I live. So he goes, let's grab a coffee. And I was like, I know who you guys are. <laughs> like, <laughs> why the hell you want to talk to me? Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it wasn't too long before I actually ended up playing a show doing my own music. And then I think it was the next day we went out for lunch and they offered me a record deal. Nice. Um and there's a long process too of like, all right, now I've got to find a lawyer and you figure out, you know, the logistics mm -hmm. of everything. And, and, uh, you know, it was still another year before I ever put out a song. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of how things got started. And, uh, it's, it's funny cause I've always like, I've, I've loved music, but after a while, it's like, you know, it's such a big dream. You, you never actually think that it could come true sort of yeah. thing. And so, uh, I just couldn't be more grateful for the fact that you know I, I feel like I slipped through the cracks in a way where uh like in, in a good way where it was like you know there's certain only a certain handful of people that you know get offered opportunities like that when they don't even like I didn't even have a song out I had nothing even to show them other than the songs that I'd written but uh yeah so it's kind of nuts how it happened I was like you know what the music thing that's a huge dream um, but it wasn't something that I really cared to chase anymore. And then it felt like it chased me. So now here we are. <laughs> hey, no, you can't go wrong with that. Even if they're just yeah. dragging you along for the ride, you're still there. Yeah, exactly. It <laughs> might end tomorrow. I have no clue, but, uh, it's a good thing I can still swing a hammer and <laughs> yeah. paint the I brush. Mean, I don't think it'll end tomorrow. I, I've listened to your music and obviously, you know, you're doing pretty well, but <laughs> thanks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, with that, you, like you said, you put something out on Facebook. How do you see the music scene with social media now? Like you're, you're just getting into it. What do you, what's your opinion on it? Uh, I suck at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so bad with socials. Like my whole team knows it. They got on my butt. I don't mm. know if I'm allowed to swear. Oh yeah. Uh, swear, swear away here. Oh, they get on my ass <laughs> yeah. uh, big time with like socials and like, especially like nowadays, TikTok is like the big thing. And yeah. that's like, you know, how a lot of artists are kind of breaking the scene. Um, but like, I, I am so bad at it. One, I don't even think about posting. I don't think like, oh, this is going to be, you know, I can say this, I can do that. Like, it'll take me it can take me a whole day to try to figure out what I want to say for a post just because yeah. I'm like what I want to say is really nothing but then it makes it look like I just don't care which I mean in a way <laughs> but <laughs> but uh yeah it'll just take me forever to actually make a post and everybody around me knows it because I'll be like hey what about this one hey what about this hey, what and they'll just like post it like what the hell just post it uh but it, it does play such a big part uh, in the industry nowadays where you have to get your name out there. You have to get your face out there, uh, for people to, to hear and see you. And, um, you know, everybody just wants to try to put out that viral post that, you know, 
gets them mm-hmm. uh, a record deal or whatever it is, but it's really working for some people. Like, uh, you know, there, there's some friends of mine that got record deals uh, from TikTok and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I remember hearing my friend Robin Adelini and like just loving her music and me and her had written a song together and stuff too. And like, uh, I think actually I'm, she's, she's from Ontario, but she's here in Langley right now with her boyfriend. So I might grab a beer tomorrow or something with her, but, yeah. uh, and then she put out this song F one fifty, and it just blew up on TikTok. And then she, you know, cuts a deal down in Nashville and just like it, that stuff happens you know, not for everybody, but that it's a really good avenue uh, that people are using for that. And I just wish I was better at it. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> but, um, happening a lot more. That's for sure. Yeah. Like I'm just learning how to use Instagram. And then all of a sudden there's <laughs> all <laughs> yeah. these like reels and TikToks and this and that. I'm just like, oh my God, I, I don't even know how to put a filter on. <laughs> don't even put filters. That's, the, that's for the influencer girls doing that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I want to be pretty too. <laughs> hey man, we, we got a unique look, you and I. It's the the, it's the bearded brothers, you know. That's yeah. a that's a look all on its own. Exactly. We're uh chopped what's it chopped up the same block or whatever that saying is? Yeah, something like that. Or cut from the same cloth or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, social media is, is it's its own monster for sure. And like myself, I don't have a lot of stuff to put on TikTok, but I know it's a necessary evil. I'm not a musician, yeah. so I have to try to figure out content for that. And my wife tried to help me with that, but who knows yeah. how that's going to go. But for, for you as a musician, it's definitely an avenue to go down for sure. Yeah. And so I think it's also like, it seems like TikTok is, I mean, I can talk up my ass. I don't really know anything about it. But what I hear is that like the more genuine your videos are, the better they're actually going to do. Mm -hmm. um because it kind of seems like people can sniff out like the fake stuff and and whatever but like um you know my thing is like I can't do the sitting in my car and like hey maybe this is a song for you (laughs) and like then start singing my song along I just I can't do that it just it would look silly on me looks Mm -hmm. good on other people and it's you know people are good at that I'm just not good at that and so uh it's trying to find the right avenue that I think is like authentic. And so for me, like, I, you know, I've been trying to figure it out lately. And I think I'm just like, even going to put some videos up of me doing like, Hey, here's a new song that I wrote, or here's a cover that I like. And it's just like a verse and chorus or something like that. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like the one thing that I do know how to do. I know how to pick my guitar and, and sing along to it. And so I'm like, maybe I just shoot out videos doing that and see how that, you know, well, see one how thing- that catches. One thing for you as an artist that could work out really well too is if you get other people doing stuff with your music in the background. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you reach that- out to some of those influencer people that are doing the dances and stuff and just have it to one of your songs, that's that's the way to blow up right there too. Yeah, if someone else wants to dance to my songs, great. Uh, <laughs> but this... Uh- <laughs> I, I, I'm, I don't I'm right know about shaking you. this booty. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I understand that thought. I'm never going to be one of those guys. But although I did kind of get myself into a, a bet with uh, another another guy I was doing an interview with, and I told him if he gets one of his songs trending, then I'm, he wants me to do a TikTok dance to it. So yeah, I like it. <laughs> I'm hoping it doesn't like trend bet. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah it's, I mean, it's a monster the, for sure it is and like those things work for other people and i'm i'm happy for them uh it's just i haven't found my avenue that that works for me yet um and it's weird because it's different on on each uh platform oh yeah like i'll, I'll have a video have like fifty thousand views on instagram reels and on tiktok it's like three thousand or ten thousand or something it's just like man it's the same video but mm-hmm. it just does better on different platforms. So it's a monster that I, uh, I will never figure out, but I will <laughs> die trying. <laughs> well, maybe someone will, you know, get hired to the team and can figure it out for you. Yeah. I mean, they offered to do that and I'm just stubborn as an ass. So I'm kind of like, <laughs> I'll just do it. I'll do it. I should probably give them my passwords. <laughs> hey, even if, even if you have them curate the content for you and you just kind of show up and film and, and you'll be yeah, and we 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 do have some uh, some people on our team that that help us with that, and so 
Okay. Uh, we got a girl, Olivia, that kind of helps me with that content. And so, yeah, we got the team trying to do it. It's just, uh, I just got to hit that button and post it. <laughs> well, get on it. Cause you know, it's going to help you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need that push. <laughs> yeah. How did you find, um, uh, doing all doing work during COVID? Like where you zoom calls with people a lot and writing music that way. Yeah. So it's funny because when, when COVID started, um, like my, my regular work, like I was painting at the time and there was like four of us dudes that were just, uh, we stopped the business for like two weeks. Cause we didn't, that was when everybody was told to just stay home. Don't go out anywhere. And we're like, all right figuring out and then also we're just get tons of calls of people for jobs and we actually got busier during covid than we did when covid wasn't a thing okay and so uh you know it, it's kind of weird like you're just going into other people's houses while there's this pandemic going on and <laughs> and everything but we we're just like we're like we gotta work like we we have to and so uh we were super busy with that but then yeah it, like everybody else was just working from home and so many artists were doing these zoom calls and interviews and stuff. And so that was just off the hook too, where like I'm at work having to take, you know, a couple breaks a day, uh, just to do like interviews in my truck or something mm -hmm. like that. And so, um, you know, I'd be just like in a dirty beater or something like that, <laughs> like just covered in paint and dirt and stuff. And I'm just like, hi, I hope you like my songs. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so it, it got super busy with that. And I think, it was another, uh, just another hoop to jump through, like trying to figure out this new technology. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, writing was weird because I wasn't used to the the interviews and stuff. And it kind of like most of those interviews are like, that's all I know is those Zoom calls. Uh, because I only released my song three months before uh, the pandemic hit. Cause it would have been March that everything got closed down and mm -hmm. I just released Christmas day, my first song. Okay. And so, uh, I didn't really have the opportunity to do a whole lot of interviews and stuff before that. Um, but the writing was weird because I, I had, you know, done a lot of co-writes and stuff and I was down in Nashville for a month, just writing nonstop. And, and I do a lot of trips down there for, for a lot of writing. And, uh, all of a sudden you're like, you could be in the same town, but you still have to do it over zoom. And it was mm. like, you, you don't get the same energy that you do in a room with other people. Uh, it's hard to, to feed off each other's like ideas and stuff Yeah. over just a call. Cause there's also like that, like half a second delay too. So like, you can't really play with the other person while they're singing. Cause like, it'll come in at a different time. It's just, it's a weird thing, but uh, there's, there's some people that are still doing it and it, it's nice because now I do get to, you know, go back to net down to Nashville and, and write with my people. But, you know, if I'm back home and there's people that got, you know, a free afternoon or whatever, it's like, Hey, let's just jump on a zoom. Like you can be down there. They can be in Ontario, no matter where. And we can still, you know, get some work done. Um, and so I, I think it was really weird and I didn't like it, but now it's also opened up uh you know more opportunities to mm -hmm. write more songs and, and stuff like that so it's i didn't like it i still don't like it but uh i don't know i, I think that's just kind of become what our our world is because i think um you know people become so accessible because you can just turn on your phone or yeah. your laptop and and boom here we are doing an interview on opposite sides of the country but um there's nothing like in person there's nothing like it. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, I'm very much like a people person. I want to have that face to face, but, uh, yeah, I think this is just the direction that I guess the industry is going in a lot, of, in a lot of ways. So, um, yeah, it kind of, for me, I'm like, it is what it is. Uh, not my favorite, but that's what it's we something. got now. So yeah. it's something. Yeah. And it well, would suck too, to just not have any of that. And then all of a sudden you fall off the radar. Yeah. Um, so for an artist like me, I'm like, man, the more publicity I can get, uh, you know, the better. And so, you know, it, it would suck for me to release a song and then not have any avenue to, you know, stay on the map uh, in the industry. So I think it, it, it definitely helped with that as well. And I mean, now things are opening up and live music's coming back and 
the, one of the main reasons we're here talking today is your upcoming trip to the Cavendish Festival. Hell yeah. That's got to be an exciting one. Wait. Yeah, it's it's going to be a it's going to be a blast. And like we get to play a few times there, which is nice. Mm-hmm. So we're doing the 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 pre pre party whatever it is whatever it's called and it's me and uh, Mackenzie Porter are doing that and then we're also playing the next day opening for Luke Combs. And uh yeah, I mean I, I couldn't be more stoked like we're on this acoustic tour in Ontario in southern Ontario uh with my label in November and um my managers go hey get off the bus we we got to talk to you for a second i was like okay and they're like we just got a show offer and it's at cavendish and already i'd heard that cavendish was just a blast Mm -hmm. so i was like this is awesome and they're like yeah it'd be like you'd be open up the stage for luke combs i'm like yes (laughs) yeah don't show me the offer just yes i like i don't care let's do it but uh no there's more than that but uh yeah. And so I, I, you know, Luke Holmes is, it's funny, me and him, the same age and we, you know, got big old ginger beards mm-hmm. and uh, you know, we're kind of the same sort of style. Like when I got into releasing music, people in radio just kept on calling me like, Oh, you're like the Canadian Luke Combs. <laughs> and I was like, you know okay. what? That's kind of cool. I'll take yeah. it. Like I'm such a huge fan of his. Um, and so it, it's really cool to, um, you know, be such a big fan of somebody, and then all of a sudden you get to actually open the stage for them. Uh, mm-hmm. so it's, I mean, I can't play the Luke Holmes covers that I do live, so that kind of sucks. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, throw one in there, why not? <laughs> yeah, they might see, cut me off early if I do. Well, you throw, you throw it in there and see if you can sneak him out on stage with you, and you know, and then everything blows up. and yeah, I just call it on the mic too. I'm like, hey, my buddy Luke's gonna come out and sing this one with me. <laughs> yeah, just really, uh, yeah, force him in a corner. <laughs> that could be interesting. Something to see for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I've, the last time I ever played at Cavendish. <laughs> I've heard good things about Cavendish. You're actually the fourth interview I have with uh, people performing at Cavendish. So we're doing like oh, a, whole, awesome. a whole series on like a, a road to Cavendish kind of interview series that we're doing right now oh that's great Mm -hmm. so lots of stories and lots of fun fun experiences gonna be had there for sure yeah yeah and i'm i'm uh i've never actually been to pi before i've uh my family's from northern ontario and Mm -hmm. so i like kind of grew up going to ontario often uh not often but like quite a bit and then uh so I'm used to that, but like nothing past Ontario I'd ever been to until, uh, oh, I guess like two weekends ago, I finally went to Quebec and then okay. this last weekend I was in, is was in Newfoundland. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to go to PEI. Um, I just want lobster. Like that's, <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> that's like my goal. I'm like, all right, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I want lobster or at least some sort of seafood. Your goal should be to go to the docks and pick one yourself. I want to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So we're actually staying there for like the week. Okay. Uh, and so I, I have some other friends that are playing Cavendish as well. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm literally as far east as I could go in this country. I might as well stay over there for a little bit. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> Vancouver, I'm literally on the coast here. So it's like, it's a long trek. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of nice to, to break it up a little bit. Because uh, we got to show the weekend before that as well. And so we're kind of going halfway across the country and then making okay. our way over to PI. Uh, but yeah, so we're just going to me and the band are staying there for like a week and we're just going to enjoy the sights and enjoy the food and enjoy the culture and everything and enjoy a bit more country music. So it's going to be fun. Yeah. And apparently from the stories I've heard music there, it's a whole different feeling. It's down home atmosphere and everyone just has a different love for it almost. Yeah, that's what I hear. And so I'm, uh, I'm excited to experience that. Mm -hmm. Um, Even like, even being in Nova Scotia this last weekend, like so many people just like did love music. And it literally just felt like, like it it felt, you know, small town sort of, I mean, it's St. John, so it is. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, it's just kind of cool how like these smaller towns and these provinces just like have this culture that not a lot of other ones do. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm excited to kind of start feeling at home in PI too. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that would be cool. 
are you bringing new music to play? Like, I know you, you just had your a release recently, uh, Wild as Her. You got anything else on deck? Yeah, we uh, we released that one a while back. And, uh, well, not a while back, a couple months. But, uh, yeah, we got some new music that we're going to be playing. Okay. Uh, we might have some new music coming out pretty soon as well. So uh, people should uh, stay tuned for that. Nice. Uh, can't exactly say when or what it's going to be, but it's going to be pretty damn soon. We so, love teasers, uh, I'm, so. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm just itching to get another tune out, and uh, this one's going to be a special one. So it's it's something that I haven't done before, and uh, yeah, so I'm excited. But then there's also going to be some other music that we're going to play that uh, that hasn't been released yet, and we don't know when we're releasing it, but hopefully soon as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so people are going to hear some of the old stuff, some of the new stuff, and. Uh, yeah and they'll just have to see what they get (laughs) nice i think you're going to be one of my first releases since you're playing kind of like first in in the festival so they're going to get uh they're going to hear this and get a little bit more excited just for that for sure love it good so i do have a few questions i like to ask everybody kind of some fun ones and a little bit more insight of who you are as a person okay so my writer specifically and i'm 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 kind of testing him to see how much he watches to see if he actually hears this question. He wanted to know if you think a hot dog is a sandwich. Oh, (laughs) no, it's not a sandwich, not a sandwich. I don't think so. I think it's its own beautiful, majestic thing. (laughs) Okay. He he was very intent on me asking that. And I said, (laughs) sure, I'll I'll throw it in there. Why not? (laughs) Does he does he think that it's a sandwich? I honestly I didn't even ask him because I, <laughs> I I get I hear that question all the time and I just don't know what to think about it. It's got bread, it's got meat, like there's two different really ways you can think about it. It's true. And then I want to say, but like it's a bun, but then there's sandwiches with buns. So mm-hmm. that's a that's tough. <laughs> I I wouldn't consider it a sandwich, but uh I can be persuaded. Either way, I love them. So <laughs> exactly, you know, that yeah. they're just great to eat. So who yeah, cares hot what dogs, corn dogs. Who cares what the hell they are? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next one I have for you is, what is something on your go-to playlist that people wouldn't expect that you listen to? Mm. <laughs> I, I call these the guilty pleasure songs. Okay. Almost. Yeah, the guilty pleasures. So I mostly like literally just listen to uh like country music a lot of like just the 90s stuff but um there is one that always gets me and it's normally in the summertime like if like a bunch of us are out like playing sand volleyball or something like that or like just when the sun's out and just having a good time like country music is obviously the best for that but then i've got a playlist uh of just will smith (laughs) like miami get jiggy with it like you know, old school Will Smith. And uh, that's my guilty pleasure, I think. Sorry, my head cut out right at the end there. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, I was just saying, yeah, like old school, like Will Smith hip hop mm-hmm. is basically like my jam. Yeah, no, I, 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 my guilty pleasure when I tell people to kind of coax things out of them if they're a little bit more hesitant with that is Nicki Minaj Super Bass. Oh, okay. It's just the energy in that song. You can kind of, it just gets you going. And I said, you know, yeah. it's, it's fun. <laughs> All right. That works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's been a Lizzo song that's been going around TikTok and that one's just been stuck in my head too. Yeah. And, uh, I don't even know the words. I just hum to it. But. Well, that's it. The, it's the beats and stuff almost that kind of just get you going. And I mean, okay. Yeah, so exactly. I'm, I'm guilty. I know most of the words that I can do super bass almost like fluently. <laughs> so hell Yeah. <laughs> it's all right i know basically every lyric to every taylor swift song so okay there you go yeah that's another guilty pleasure (laughs) you know what's great that one's just pleasure that one's just pleasure yeah good music is good music yeah exactly all right a couple more thinkers now for you so what is one thing that you think should be asked more in interviews that's not asked enough and this doesn't have to be specifically you since you're, like you said, you're a little bit newer to things, but something that you've noticed that it'd be more interesting to, to hear more. Yeah. 
Um, man, that's tough. I, I think a good question that kind of, it could either surprise people or, or not, but like, if you weren't doing music, like what, what would you be doing? Like, what would be your other job? Um, like for myself, like I, I would probably want to pursue, like uh, I was contracting, I was going to be happy doing contract for the rest of my life, but like either pursue acting or I always wanted to, um, you know, be like a, a counselor or something when I was younger. And so it's, okay. I think that kind of like brings out the character of people too, of uh, what, what they would be doing. Cause it's the music questions are great, but there's also something about like figuring out what other people's like what their other passions are outside mm -hmm. of music. And I think that can really, uh, yeah, just just show a, a different side of, of every musician because we have more than just the music. So uh, anything that's just like personal that isn't just talking about music, even a hot dog question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect. It's great. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just a personable guy. And so I, I like, you know, talking about not just the music. I like talking about, you know, there, there's other things in life that uh, that are just as good. So, yeah. Mm hmm. I don't know uh, if that yeah. answers your question at all, but <laughs> no, it, it does. And I, and I like that. And that's one thing I try to, I mean, obviously you're going to have cookie cutter questions. That's just standard for every interview. It makes sense. But I always try to learn a little bit more about who you are and kind of get a feel for who you are as a person with the questions I ask that way. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. So another one I have is what is a piece of advice that you were given when you were starting out in music? that you kind of held on tightly to? <laughs> I'll say one that uh, our, our record label owner and one of my managers says to us all the time. And he just says, sings your songs. <laughs> Don't worry about anything else. Just sing your songs. Keep your head on straight look forward and that that's all you got to do as an artist and uh i mean the way that he says it is normally uh like in a joking way of basically shut up tyler yeah <laughs> but <laughs> that's most of why he's saying that but uh but i think it's also good advice too of just like you know what i'm a musician i don't have to get political i don't have to get this i don't have to get this I, it's just like and it's not it wasn't even talking about that stuff it's just like like what i'm here to do is write music and play music for other people to enjoy that's what i'm going to do uh that's my goal as a musician and there's ways that we can you know help people and stuff through music and and i think that's really good too um but yeah there, there's that and then also um a lot of things that I was told as I was starting out was like, it's not just about you and it's not about, um, actually I, I can say, so I can pinpoint this is one guy, this guy, he's, uh, do you ever listen to like any like screamo? <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. Do you know the band under oath? Yes, actually. Okay. So I used to also enjoy a little bit of that back in the day. And uh, Aaron Gillespie, the drummer of Under Oath, um, me and him were sitting on these steps outside of a show one time and we had met a couple of times and, and I was kind of just venting to him about how like, man, I just want to make it music and like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong and all this. And, and uh, he actually said to me, he goes, and I was like a Christian and so, so is he. And he goes, right now, I'm going to tell you, your priorities are you, music and God. And he goes, right now, I'm going to tell you, you're not going to make it music because your priorities are flipped. He goes, until it's God, music, you, that's when you're on the right track. And that's when things are going to happen. And, uh, you know, you, for those that aren't, you know, religious too, like they can take God of the equation that way and just go like, like have the music before yourself. And I think that, you know, when you're more focused on like, you know, your product and your music and stuff more than trying to put yourself out there in that way. Like, I think that makes a good musician. And I think, uh, you know, I, I also, I'm, I'm very like 
self-deprecating and I think that's <laughs> hilarious. So I'll always kind of just like put myself down a little bit, but I think it's hilarious. Um, but yeah, put the music before yourself. And uh, I think that's a, a good rule of thumb. That kind of transitions yeah. nicely into my last question then is what keeps you going in music? Uh, like why, why do you still do this? Yeah. It's the people, man. It's, it's, uh, nothing can make a long ass flight or a delayed flight. And when you get your baggage lost and late nights and long days of traveling and you're tired as hell and you get up on a stage and the crowd just starts cheering and they start singing your songs back to you. That's why I do it because there's nothing like that feeling. And I've already said that in this interview, but it, mm -hmm. I literally could not say it more. Like it's, um, there, there's something about like being able to bring joy to people through music. Um, and there's a couple songs in my like, or there's one in particular called fighting, uh, that I put out and it's basically about fighting with myself to become a better man. And, um, I don't know how many times I've had people show me tattoos of the lyrics of the song tattooed on them. And, uh, you know, people saying how it's like, you know, help them in so many ways and all that. And I'm like, shit, like, that's why I do this. Like it's, it's to, to, to help people and to, you know, bring them for three and a half minutes, bring them outside of whatever problem they're dealing with or whatever life is bringing them just three and a half minutes, just give them a bit of a relief of, uh, either something just fun or just something meaningful. And so, uh, uh, when I get to encounter those moments and those people, uh, that makes it worth it. And that makes me, that, that fuels my fire. Nice. Yeah. I think that's uh that's a perfect way we can cap off this this whole chat we had. That's a great way to leave it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I had a I had a wonderful time getting to getting to know you and meeting you. And I'm a fan of your music now. I was listening to it before for the interview, and I was like, man, this is this is good. I like this. Oh, thanks, man. It was good to meet you too, Tom. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to hopefully have another chat with you and hopefully you have a, a blast at Cavendish. I mean let's be honest that's supposed to be a crazy event so hell yeah it's gonna be good mm -hmm. <laughs> and i'm happy to anytime man always here for a chat yeah I'm, I'm always around i love chatting so i started doing this during covid and i kind of i kind of dug it so why not keep it up yeah that's awesome i love it all right well we'll sign off here and hope you enjoy the rest of your day we'll make sure we link all of your socials and everything even though you don't use them that often <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll try to share as much as I can. <laughs> well, I'm going to tag you in things, so hopefully you'll share this stuff. Perfect. Yeah, that's easy enough when I can just click, post it. There you go. I'll, I'll try to yeah. make it as easy as I can for you. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right, man, you enjoy your day. Next time you're in Ottawa, beer's on me. Absolutely. Love it. All right, have a good one. Awesome. Thanks, man. You too. Cheers. Bye.